Today we're going to do some lost foam casting and we're going to make this really cool crank stand truing station. Now, all of these little parts is what we're making today and we're going to machine these out of foam. This is your regular foam that you're going to use from the building supply place, not your polystyrene. It's actually a more dense version of the foam. I machine these parts in front and back orientation and I'm going to put them together with some 3M spray. One of the things that I really love about lost foam casting is is you don't actually need a CNC machine or anything super fancy to make these parts. A person at home in their shop can make this very easily with, say, maybe even simple woodworking tools. Say a knife, a file, and some sandpaper. And voila, you got yourself a part that you're going to be able to cast later on. The only problem is, is if it for some reason messes up, this is an investment casting, so it's going to be G-O-N-E, gone, and you're going to have to start the process all over again. Now, I'm gonna grab some polystyrene here and I'm gonna cut the polystyrene out. I think this came from packing material of, I think it was a KitchenAid mixer the wife bought. And this is the type that has little beads in it. So the reason why we're not using polystyrene in the original casting is, is you can't get as fine a detail. However, the less dense polystyrene that you're seeing here makes really good for sprues. Sprues are the end shoot where you pour your aluminum and it goes into the actual part. Because of the low density, it doesn't take a lot of heat away from the original casting and it allows the aluminum to get in there a lot faster and do what we need to do. One of the things that I've learned over time is, is if you make a shoot a little bit narrower where it goes in, and later on this is going to make it easier to part it off with the bandsaw. So you'll notice that I'm actually making two separate parts with all of this. One of these is from my motorcycle friend down the road, and one of these I'm actually going to keep in my shop, not only for balancing and truing cranks, but I actually can use this to balance my small surface grinder wheel, which is going to be pretty useful for getting really good surface finishes. The next step once we get all that done is to take it outside and we're going to use the drywall slurry. There is a video about that on how to make it if you're curious about it, but simply it's really just watered down drywall slurry. Now the purpose of this is not to actually really hold the sand back. The purpose of this is going to be really simple. It's going to give us a really nice surface finish. In sand casting, it's kind of like the really fine sand that you see them kind of shake over it in the actual green sand casting. And this is going to give us a smooth, delicate surface, except for one drawback, the air bubbles. The air bubbles seemingly get entrained in it, and I mix this a little bit too thoroughly, and at the end of the video, I'll show you how that kind of affected later on down the road. But it's just one small step to fix that, and it's not too big of a deal. One of the things I can give you advice on is I was doing this inside for a while, and this is more of an outside cat kind of situation where you can kind of dip it, you drip everywhere, and then throw some wire through it, mechanics wire, what do you call it, and hang it up on the laundry line for a couple hours just to kind of harden it up and get rid of all the drip before you take it inside and thoroughly dry it overnight. Second thing I've also realized too, if you do it outside, you can grab the air gun or say the blower, you can actually give it a bit of a blow and it'll get a lot of those little air bubbles out. Now you can see I'm production lining this. I'm doing quite a few other little projects. And speaking of other projects, remember the oil furnace burner that I put together in that other video? This one is working fantastic. And speaking of fantastic, I came up with a crazy idea the other day. I was scrolling on Facebook Marketplace and realized that I could buy a skill saw for about $25. And guess what? A skill saw will cut aluminum. Now, the reason why I have this skill saw here is I'm actually going to cut up the aluminum frames that I have because I'm running out of aluminum. Now, this is obviously super hard on your tools, but it does actually work. And this is the second frame that I've completely cut up. And stay tuned in another video. I'm actually going to cut up a whole frame and show you how I do this. Now, let's grab some of those projects because they dried overnight. Remember, we have to have all of this stuff super duper dry. And let's throw them in some sand and get casting away on this. Now, remember that this is really basic stuff. This is just regular sand that you got from like Home Depot. It doesn't have any rocks in it. It's actually, I think, mortar sand, and it's been working out really good. Now, I threw about three or four inches in the bottom of the pail here, just to kind of give me a starting point with the sand and kind of get everything sitting upright. It's really basic now. All I got to do is fill this up with the sand that I have there and make sure I don't break the parts. <laughs> um, it's kind of funny, these are super delicate, so you just gotta, gotta take your time and slowly pour the sand on top. And if you have anything super big or flat, you have to be very careful not to distort it. Now, remember I said I do this all with really basic tools. <laughs> ha! 
Well, the vibrator is actually a recip saw. The recip saw is actually going to vibrate our pail and it's going to somewhat pack the sand down. I mean, I'm sure you could pack the sand down by hand, but this is going to get it inside and all those little tiny nooks and crannies that you want to get it into, whereas packing it down may not necessarily get it where you need. The final step is the soup can. This is going to be kind of our funnel or our basin, so to speak, that's going to hold the aluminum in there while it's pouring down into the bottom. Now remember, I'm going to say this again later. If that can goes dry while you're pouring it, the sand's going to collapse and you're not going to have a viable part. So what I've learned is you give it a really good vibration, pack that sand down really well, and then once you start pouring, I don't stop because if I stop, once again, this is key, all of that sand is going to collapse in on it. It's actually the aluminum itself that's holding the walls of the sand back and nothing more than that. Now let's grab some of that scrap that we cut up and throw it in the melting pot and get moving along with this whole project. One thing that's working really well for me here is using larger pieces of scrap because it's creating a little bit less dross for me. And once I scrape the dross off, I don't have to be too specific with it because I have that little skimmer there on the pouring stout. It works out quite well and I'm not getting too many impurities in there. And speaking of impurities, yes, I am adding impurities by using a metal crucible and it makes the metal a little bit more brittle. But I'm not making really space age parts here and I'm happy with the production that I made. So I'm just going to continue doing what I'm doing. A really important side note here as well is all of the PPE that I'm wearing. Now, not all of my PPE is perfect, but it's a great start and it's better to have something than nothing. One of the key important PPE here is that's often overlooked is an organic filter mask. Now, this is going to kick off a lot of gases, not only during the pouring phase, but also in the knockout demolding phase. Now remember what I said earlier, once I start pouring, I can't stop because if I stop pouring, the walls of the foam are gonna fall in. And the key here is, is to fill that can up and make sure that can's full until it's got all the way to the bottom of everything. When I first started doing this, I didn't know what to expect. And you see that little burst of flame? It's the first burst of flame, I'd actually stop pouring <laughs> and get a little bit nervous and that's why I was getting parts that would get ruined. And by the way, spoiler alert, um, all of the parts today worked out really well and I'm pretty happy with them. Let's finish pouring this up and then we'll knock them out after waiting 20 minutes and we'll have a really good look at them. So speaking of safety, um, <laughs> I have some aluminum left over and I'm just going to dump it on the ground. Don't do what I'm doing here because if there's any moisture in that ground, it can actually spatter up at you. I haven't had any problems yet and it hasn't rained for a few days, but I'm going to do what I do and you do what you do. Speaking of molding, let's knock these molds out and see what we got here. Man, that turned out really good. The first part's looking good. Second parts are looking really good and the one that I actually thought I ruined where I broke the sprue off That's pretty serviceable as well So you see all that steam or smoke coming off there That's still the foam off gassing from the sand and this can last for months and months after perhaps not at that magnitude But if you've ever done lost foam casting, you'll know exactly what I mean Let's take a look at the second batch and see what we got here Man, it's almost like Christmas. This is turning out really well today. I'm pretty happy with all of this. And it's going to be pretty easy to clean all this up when it comes time to machine it all. Now for pail three, I didn't really have any doubts on this pour because I actually dumped way more aluminum in there than I needed. And it looks like it turned out pretty good. The only final step we got now is to let this fully cool down till we can handle it with our bare hands. And we'll take it over to the bandsaw and we'll cut these off. So remember I said that there was going to be some defects with air bubbles? Let's have a quick look at this here now, a little bit closer. Now, a lot of that drywall stuff is flaking off super easy, and that's not really a concern. But you see those little beads on there? That's right, those are easily solved with a wire wheel. They knock right off, along with all of that drywall stuff. Now, the only thing we have left here is to get the old bandsaw out and to cut these parts off. One of the things that you can kind of tell whether it's a good casting or not as well is if you get any air inclusions or overlaps on the inside, 
and I'm not really seeing any of that in here today. Oh yeah, and remember that tin can that I threw on there? That's very easily removed by a simple solution of just cutting it lengthwise with a bandsaw. This is gonna allow me to reuse all that aluminum in there, and that's one thing I love about casting is, you can make mistakes, and you can just throw it back in the pot and remelt it until you get it absolutely right. <laughs> it's just a matter of breaking that bad boy off there, throwing her off in the pile. Yep, that's quite the pile I have there and getting ready to cut up the next one. Check out the bottom casting when I cut this off here. Now you can see that there's no inclusions on the bottom of that on the inside, and that's a really good casting. Hey, I really enjoyed hanging out with you today. It was, re it was really cool building this. And if you like this video, why don't you check this other video up in the top left here or the right, and we'll catch you on the next one. And remember guys, stay safe out there, and get out to the shop and build something cool.